There was no weeping. There was no, oh my God, he knew she was dead. He knew she was dead on the 24th. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 true crime documentaries to watch in 2022. Do you know about the meat suit? What is the meat suit? Oh no. What's the meat suit? I'm gonna need a minute. <laughs> for this list, we'll be looking at the most intriguing true crime documentaries that have been released or are set to release in 2022. We won't be considering scripted movies or shows based on real events like Inventing Anna. Which of these are you most interested in? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Trust No One – The Hunt for the Crypto King the titular crypto king refers to Gerald Cotton, the co-founder of Canadian cryptocurrency exchange company Quadriga. Cotton was operating Quadriga like a Ponzi scheme, so whenever people put in their money into the exchange, he sort of used it as his personal slush fund. Without getting too into the weeds, basically people would send money to Quadriga, who would invest it in Bitcoin for them. However, the company allegedly never invested those funds at all. To make matters worse, Cotton died in 2018, and because he was the sole password holder, reportedly took $190 million US in cryptocurrency with him. 115,000 people were effectively out of their money. And along with his death, the problem here is also access to his laptop, and that laptop contains the $250 million, thousands of potential Canadian uh, accounts there, and they all might be gone for good. The Ontario Securities Commission has labeled Quadriga a Ponzi scheme. Some people online have even speculated that Cotton faked his own death. The fact that he did what he did, I carry his shame with me. And I'll carry that shame with me probably every single day for the rest of my life. A documentary about the case is scheduled for Netflix on March 30th. Number nine, Murder Under the Friday Night Lights. This series from Investigation Discovery is all about, you guessed it, football. Well, true crime and football to be more exact. This unique series chronicles various true crime cases involving high school football. Some of the stories include a student who went missing, a star player who becomes the prime suspect in a killing, and the horrifying discovery of a slain teacher. My daughter Kiara came in, said, Dad, where's mom? I said, uh, probably the bedroom. And she goes, comes, goes back, and comes back and said, the door's locked. My wife never locked that door. The series explores not just the cases themselves, but how they impacted both the teams and the communities at large. There are a gazillion true crime documentaries out there, and it's nice to see one with a fresh angle. Number eight, The Puppet Master, hunting the ultimate con man. Mom, if you're listening to this right now, it doesn't matter you know, what we've been through. We still love you, and we want you back in our lives. Released in January of 2022, this docu-series chronicles the life and crimes of British conman Robert Hendy Freeguard. Hendy Freeguard would approach his victims and pretend to be an undercover agent working for MI5. He would tell them that thanks to their association with him, they were being targeted by the IRA and had to go into hiding, separating them from family and friends. Some were put through made-up loyalty tests, and many were swindled out of their money. I felt Sarah was spending too much money. She always looked after money, and she would never go and spend it wildly at all. We were feeling unsettled about what was going on. This docuseries tells the twisted tale of how he sold such an outlandish lie to his victims. Utterly shocked. And the crimes he's carried out are horrific. This man was around my family and we didn't know who he was. Number seven, the Jeans. In 1969, a group of women in Chicago decided to take matters into their own hands, setting up a hotline, offering counseling and providing abortion services under the moniker Jane. Premiering at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2022, this feature documentary tells a complex story about the muddy nature of the law. It concerns the Jane Collective, an underground activist movement that performed safe and inexpensive abortions throughout the early 70s. I don't think I'd ever been described a medical procedure before by someone saying this is exactly what's going to happen, and I was prepared. Because abortion was illegal at the time, they worked in secrecy. Regardless, word got around, and it's believed that the Jane Collective helped an estimated 11,000 women. 
The movement was eventually raided by the police, and its members faced life in prison. However, Roe v. Wade was decided soon after, and the charges against the Jane Collective were dropped. And the key lesson we have is that we need to take action now. We need to organize. And if we organize, we can change the world. Number six, Scott Peterson, The Friends Speak. Anyone who regularly watches true crime shows is sure to recognize the name Scott Peterson. Peterson dumped Lacey's body in San Francisco Bay on Christmas Eve 2002. His story has been told on all the big programs, including 48 Hours, 2020, and Dateline. In January 2022, Reels released the documentary, Scott Peterson, The Friends Speak, which contains exclusive interviews with Peterson's close associates and the detectives who worked on the case. He was not in a position where she could walk comfortably, oh which is God. how come when I heard that she was walking the dog when she disappeared, I called the police and said, the woman couldn't walk. Said case dates back to 2002, when Peterson killed his pregnant wife, Lacey. He was convicted for both and sentenced to death, although this was later commuted to life in prison. He's currently serving his time in California's notorious San Quentin. No matter what happens, there are two things that will never change. Lacey and Connor will always be dead, and you will always be their murderer. Number five, bad vegan, fame, fraud, fugitives. If I tell you to take all your money out of the bank and light it on fire, do it. Sarma Meln Galis is a chef who specializes in raw food and she operated a widely praised restaurant in Manhattan called Pure Food and Wine. Sarma was the brand, the raw vegan queen. It was such a great environment to work in. If none of this had ever happened, we'd probably still be working there. However, in 2015, staff complained about unpaid wages and walked out twice. I said that I felt like she was stealing from us and I was fired. Melm Galis gave different explanations to different people about the missing money. She then went on the run with her then-husband before getting arrested in Tennessee and facing trial for stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from investors, among other crimes. Somehow, though, she spent just four months in prison. Bad Vegan will tell this story when it's released on Netflix in March. What if Sarma was running a scam on him? If that was the con. Makes her look like the vegan Bernie Madoff. What happened? Number four, Scream, the true story. Hello? Hello, Cindy. The first Scream movie was partly inspired by serial killer Danny Rowling, also known as the Gainesville Ripper. Rowling infamously killed five college students in Gainesville, Florida in August of 1990. He later confessed to killing eight people throughout his life, which included three more victims in his home state of Louisiana. This Discovery Plus doc takes a unique approach. It contains all the typical documentary trappings like exclusive interviews with experts and close personal associates of Rowling. However, it also contains a paranormal investigation as Rowling claimed that he was possessed by a malicious demon. He wanted everyone to know that evil is real. The investigation sees two paranormal experts travel from Rowling's childhood home in Louisiana to a Florida campsite where Rowling stalked his victims. Number three, we need to talk about Cosby. I feel like I have to have I, this discussion. I don't, who knows anymore? But Why? I, I would like to believe that. I am a child of Bill Cosby. You know what I mean. This Showtime miniseries was created by W. Kamau Bell, the host of CNN's Emmy-winning TV series, United Shades of America. His documentary includes numerous people associated with the Cosby case, including Cosby's victims and journalists who worked extensively on breaking the story. Did you tell anyone the story? Never told anybody. I mean, told them that he had gotten us drugged out or that, you know, that he wasn't the nice person that everybody thought he was. We Need to Talk About Cosby examines not only the heinous crimes, but how the entertainment industry allowed him to flourish for decades. It's one of the biggest Hollywood scandals of our time, and this doc is an equally painful and necessary glimpse into how it happened. I wanted to hold on to my memories of Bill Cosby before I knew about Bill Cosby. And I guess I can, as long as I admit, as long as we all admit, that there's just a Bill Cosby we didn't know. 
Number 2. BTK – Confession of a Serial Killer Few serial killers are as notorious as BTK. He wanted to test me. He said he wanted me to solve some codes, and he, he liked working with codes. Real name Dennis Rader, BTK's killing spanned multiple decades, ranging from 1974 to 1991. In that time, Rader killed 10 people throughout Kansas and personally corresponded with both the police and media. He had an ego to say the least. There's a great value in understanding Dennis Rader and his motivations, the things that made him do what he did. Unlike the other documentaries centered around BTK, this one delves into the psyche of a serial killer and simply uses Rader as an outlet. It provides exclusive phone interviews with the man himself, and forensic psychology expert Dr. Katherine Ramsland provides her expertise. Ramsland knows BTK intimately, having personally corresponded with him for years. BTK. And so once I returned the code to him and said, okay, what's next? He recognized that, not that I had solved the code, but that I would play the game. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Tinder Swindler One little swipe can change your life forever. You'll never swipe right with quite the same confidence after this documentary film. The Tinder swindler tells the story of Israeli con artist Simon Levayev, who used Tinder to meet his victims. He would woo them with lavish gifts, which he paid for with money swindled from previous victims. Claiming to have powerful enemies, he would ask them to send him money. Rinse, repeat. In all, he swindled an estimated $10 million from his victims. It was like that person on the phone was no longer my boyfriend. Was no longer my boyfriend. I, it was just a, uh, just a darkness. The documentary is a fascinating glimpse into not only Leviev's scheme, but how online dating can be used to manipulate and deceive. Simon is surrounded by a lot of people, especially his bodyguard and his business partner. We don't know who is working with Simon and how far this conspiracy actually goes. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.